I think of it this way, that there are these two pieces to preaching. There's the content piece. Uh, that's making sure that you understood this passage, you understand its themes, you, you understand the central truths displayed by this particular passage. But there's a second piece of this. It's the communication piece. How will I now communicate these truths? It's sort of like this. I love to cook. It's sort of like preparing a Thanksgiving meal. When I prepare a Thanksgiving meal, the first thing I do is collect fine ingredients, right? Because if you're going to have a good meal, you have to collect good ingredients. That's the content part of the sermon. You collect good ingredients. But Thursday, when the family is gathered, you don't put ingredients on the table. Because a bite of flour followed by a bite of butter and a suck of yeast is not, neither consumable or appetizing. You understand that there's an amazing amount of labor between content and meal. That's preaching. If the people before you were chefs, you could put ingredients on the table. You're the chef. And this has to be formed into consumable uh, food so they can take it in and it comes out as their strength. That's the plan. Now, if you're preparing content on Saturday night, you have no possibility of turning that into a sermon. That will be ingredients put on the table. It'll be a can of pumpkin, a raw turkey, and flour and butter and yeast. No wonder people sleep. No wonder they're unmoved. No wonder they no longer are expectant. That's why I find I've got to get ahead. I've got to, I've got to get ahead some. And so that, that I have time to take that content, to have it marinate and begin to change me and grip me. And I begin to think of ways that are creative and engaging of helping people to understand those truths so they're all inspiring and consumable. That's what you should do whether it's a Sunday school class or a small group or a sermon. What a holy calling this is. I can't tell you how many conversations I've had at one o'clock on Saturday, having finished a ministry weekend where the pastor says to me, I'd love to take you out for lunch, but I haven't thought about my sermon. I'm going home to prepare it. I want to say to him, don't bother. You know, Piper's website, just play one of those. It'll help your people. Because he prepares. Don't bother. You cannot stand in the shadow of the glory of God and allow yourself to do that. It won't work. And in the middle of that is, if you're doing that on Saturday night, you have had no time for those truths to grip your heart, to bring you to conviction, to bring you to devotion, because there's been no meditation. You're not worshiping your way through your preparation. So you have no passion. You have no tenderness. You have no humility. Listen, it's the passion, it's the tenderness, it's the humility, it's your worship that makes that sermon engaging. That's why God chose for His truths to be communicated through a person. That's why. 